The Iroquois Confederacy, founded in 1142, is the oldest living participatory democracy on earth. It inspired the structure of the United States government and many of the democratic principles incorporated into the Constitution. The Iroquois are also the source of the concept of individual freedom. At the time of the American Revolution, Europe was still living under the feudal system with a severe class distinction. There was no middle class, just wealthy landowners and the serfs who work their lands. The idea that every individual has a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is a distinctly Native American concept. The right to vote is considered a fundamental right within our democracy. However, for Native Americans, the fight to obtain voting rights is couched in a long history of racism and struggle. When the 14th Amendment was passed in 1866, making all persons born in the United States citizens, Indians on reservations were specifically excluded. The Indian Citizenship Act was passed in 1924, but did not automatically enforce the right to vote. Native Americans were still prevented from participating in elections because the Constitution left it up to the states to decide who has the right to vote. After the passage of the 1924 Citizenship Bill, it still took over 40 years for all 50 states to allow Native Americans to vote. Thousands of Native veterans, including American Indian code talkers, returning from World War II who found themselves prohibited from participating in basic civil liberties in the nation they had fought to protect. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 finally outlawed exclusionary practices that deny or abridge the right of any citizen of the United States to vote on account of race or color. However, despite these protections and subsequent legislation, discriminatory practices continue to this day. The irony of this civil rights battle is not lost on the indigenous communities leading the fight on the ground. We are being denied an inherent and moral right. This is our territory. This is our land, says Judith LeBlanc, a Cato Nation Native Organizer Alliance. Today, many states are passing legislation that places a hardship on Native Americans' ability to vote by requiring a state-issued ID instead of a tribal student or military ID, yet not providing a single site on a reservation where a state ID can be obtained, or requiring a street address when in many places on reservations there are no streets, eliminating polling stations so that voters have to travel hours to vote, changing polling stations shortly before elections, raising the possibility of people voting in the wrong precinct and having their vote thrown out, prohibiting neighbors from collecting mail-in votes from housebound people or from those with no transportation. Galvanized by anger over the North Dakota voter ID law, and aided by the intensive efforts of tribal leaders and advocacy groups, Native Americans turned out for the 2018 elections in numbers, unprecedented even for a presidential election, much less a midterm. Ruth Anna Buffalo became the first Native American Democratic woman elected in North Dakota legislature. She unseated State Representative Randy Booning the primary sponsor of the very voter ID law Native Americans had feared would disenfranchise them. Since its inception in 1970, the Native American Rights Fund, NARF, has worked on cases to ensure equal and fair access to voting for Native citizens. There have been several legal challenges to the state's restrictive laws. Addressing the state of South Dakota, NARF attorney Jacqueline de Leon said Native Americans are not offered the voter registration opportunities they're entitled to under law. We told the state that there was a problem, but they did not fix it. Apparently, they did not see the disenfranchisement of Native voters and the silencing of Native voices as an important issue. We do. And Arizona's ban on ballot harvesting and its policy of rejecting ballots accidentally cast in the wrong precinct was overturned. 
Quote, voting is a right and a responsibility we share, and this decision prevents Arizonans from facing prosecution for simply helping a neighbor return their ballot, says Secretary of State Katie Hobbs. What the United Methodist Church says. We understand as a general principle that every person is created in the image of God and is therefore of equal standing in society. Recognizing the inherent dignity of every person, United Methodists are committed to upholding human rights for all, including their social and political rights. The Book of Discipline says, We hold governments responsible for the protection of the rights of the people to free and fair elections. The form and the leaders of all governments should be determined by the exercise of the right to vote guaranteed to all adult citizens. Free and fair elections are the pillar of democracy. They are determined in part through a commitment to the following principles. One person, one vote, fair political representation of all residents, fair and transparent paths to citizenship, transparent and secure electoral process. The social principles tell us that the United Methodists are particularly concerned for discriminatory practices against underrepresented communities. Quote, we further assert the right of historically underrepresented racial and ethnic persons to non-discrimination in voting. Here are some action steps you can take. Call your senators to support S1, the For the People Act of 2021 Voting Rights Law. Watch Suppressed, a fight to vote on YouTube for free. Download Toolkit from umcjustice.org, creating change together.